Hey everybody. Uh, welcome to another session of Azure Spring Clean 2024. My name is Abdul Kazi and I have my partner in crime, Chris. Hey Chris, how's it going? Going great. Thank you, Abdul. Um, yeah, Good. exciting that we've done this for a few years now, right? Uh, maybe two, exactly. three years. So yeah, I think yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah. Um, it's a good opportunity to share some some tips, some tricks with uh, folks in the community on just doing things, you know, doing some cleanup things or or writing the ship for things that might be existing in our environments. <laughs> uh, and hopefully, we're going to exactly. try and nail that one down today for folks, right? Yep, yep. And shout out to uh, you know uh, for uh, to Thomas and uh, um, the other person to you know getting this set up and getting us the opportunity so yeah beautiful um yeah. with that being said you know let's do the introduction so yeah uh, so awesome you're up um me i'm chris gill um i'm a microsoft azure mvp um i'm a microsoft certified trainer uh, been doing a little bit of everything for the last 20 some years in the industry um, really like my focus is on, <clears throat> excuse me, Microsoft Azure, Enter ID, identity management, security, um, part of come cloud with us with Abdul. Um, uh, we bring a lot of fun content to the community. Um, this is where it can be reached. If you need um, any questions on any of the stuff on the screen, whether it's just, you know, ADHD, um, you know, uh, technology in general, or just saying hi. Um, this is how you can reach me. So thank you. And Abdul? Yeah, perfect. Thanks. And so, yeah, uh, as I said, my name is Abdul Kazi. I've uh, been in the industry for almost 20 years now. Uh, certified, I'm MT's MCT and then newly minted MVP. So <laughs> kind of proud of that. Thank you, Chris. And uh -huh. um we and as as Chris mentioned, we are the co-host of Come Cloud with us. So we're always looking for speakers. Uh, you know, if if you want to present, doesn't matter if you're new, if you're f f fresh, or you're a senior speaker. You know, we're always looking for speakers and um, come, and uh, you know, present a session for us. <laughs> so today, getting in the topic, you know, we are going to be talking about access packages and. Given this, this might be new to folks. You know, access packages uh, is fairly new, I would say. A lot of features um, have been in preview, and Microsoft has actually has been making quite a bit of a uh, stride in this front. So, you know, before I jump into what access packages is, let's run through a scenario. So, so Chris, for example, you know, let's say your company wants to collaborate with my company. Uh, mm -hmm. or any partners, any vendors, right? Uh, they want to collaborate. So generally speaking today, what they do is they say, okay, let's do collaboration on SharePoint. So what happens is the company employees that want to collaborate, they would be added to the SharePoint site. You know, you would, the SharePoint admin would go in there, add those users from, and, and depending on how you want to do it, you know, go into the SharePoint um, online admin, invite those users and go in there. Now, that's only SharePoint. Now, think about if somebody mm -hmm. wants to invite two teams, that's another process. Also, mm -hmm. some companies might want to give you access to their SaaS applications, like we have the intra enterprise uh, applications, right? So that can get me messy in a sense that now IT from an operational standpoint has to take a look and see, okay, what access does this person has and especially when the person leaves they'll it's not a clean way of uh doing offboarding uh you know so once um that's pretty much you know and plus shadow it can also come into play so that's the other challenge too sure. so what uh access package does is it pretty much gives you um it comes under the entitlement management you know in from a governance standpoint everything is coming under one umbrella and as they say you know one uh throat to choke so 
what happens is you can invite the user as a guest. So if you're talking about an external user, it could be a guest user. Obviously, if somebody is within your uh, tenant, the Office 365 or, or intro ID tenant, then they would be a um, user, right? So there's probably going to be a member from that as a standpoint. Uh, but you can add them to a group and then manage permission that way. Uh, so it really becomes easy to manage um, and giving permission as well. So for example, you know, you can also assign permission. So on the SharePoint side, either you're providing uh, a member permission, visitor permission or owner permission, right? So you, those kind of things also come into play with the access package. Sure. And as you can see from the icons, right? Teams, Office 365, SharePoint, and then the Azure piece. So these are, and the last one is mainly the apps uh, um, that comes into play. And we'll see that in the demo as well. Awesome. And before we move on, you know, obviously this is fairly new. So I want to give a rundown of what the terminology means. You'll be seeing these terminologies. So, you know, it's good to have a overview of what that means. So I'll actually start from the bottom or the, the top. So a catalog think, and we've, we already know what a catalog is, you know, like when we talked about ITIL or ITSM, we already talk about catalogs. But in mm -hmm. this re reference, a catalog is pretty much think of it as a box, um, you know, um, where all your access packages are going to be, your resources are going to be. So it's pretty much the outer layer uh, covering of um, your entire management. Okay. So you'll have resources, we'll add resources there. You'll have access packages, multiple access packages. You'll have policies um, from there. And then the access package is pretty much, as I mentioned, you know, you can uh, have access packages where you would be sharing different kinds of resources, SharePoint Online, Teams, uh, applications as well, right? So that's the thing. And then with policy, and policy is actually very, very interesting because um, I'm working with a uh, public sector customer right now in Canada. Mm -hmm. And we're, what we're doing with the policy is, you know, they have unique cases. Uh, they have people who are coming with specific domains. So we have whitelisted those domains. Some people want to only uh, self-serve and then say, okay, we are going to be doing approvals and then you can do mm -hmm. one two three level of approvals you can have an internal approval person external one and then some people are saying okay nope we don't want to do self-service we only want to invite people so it is going to be admin control so there's so many variations plus the thing is uh, if there's a contractor uh you can even set a life cycle saying okay mm -hmm. six months one year you know and then you can also do access reviews because as we know nobody is good with access reviews so this actually you can even turn on access reviews for six months one year whatnot so we'll take a look at that but that's really part of the policy and lastly um you know uh, the resources and i as i mentioned the mainly three type of resources right now and the funny thing is microsoft keeps adding more resources we'll see the enter id group in there but uh one, you need a specific license for that. And then it's still in preview, so we don't know what exactly that is going to look like. Uh, but yeah, so from a resource standpoint, SharePoint, Teams, um, your applications, and then you can add uh, groups as well. So one thing if I wanna, you don't mind, Abdul, yeah. there's, there's one question that I wanted to, because you mentioned about like policies and one of the things that I, I believe, so I, you know, you mentioned catalogs and I'm thinking like, I'm looking at my shelf behind me, like, Hey, I want to go to a library and grab a book. So, you know, you kind of the catalog and that, that kind of resounded with me, but one of the things um, you know, we talk about, like how users can get access to these things. So are you saying, are you suggesting that we can within the policies, like create a request policy? So it's like, I have this available to me, but I can actually go and, and kind of say, here's what I have available. Right. So like yeah. as part of the, the available policies, I, I have maybe multiple access package or um, uh, yeah, you know, it, access exactly. packages available to me. Yes. So Microsoft actually has a specific 
portal myapps.microsoft.com so you go there and you can see what um, access packages are available to you and then you can request so if it's self-serve so once you log into your tenant then you can see all the uh, access packages available to you obviously each access package has a unique link specifically if you're going to a different tenant right yeah. so they would send you that link you would log in and we'll see that in, in the process here how that looks like but yeah uh, that, that's a good question so yeah if you want to do self-serve then people can actually even go and request that access package and depending on how the policy is set up if they're coming from internal internally mm -hmm. so you might white label that domain and say yep anybody coming from our domain it's white label boom auto approve so nobody you know has to go and take the operational overhead now mm -hmm. if you say okay we don't know somebody is coming from a gmail or anybody you know we don't want anybody just coming in we want to make sure that they come in we have a justification why they came in and so those kind of uh things have to be approved and depending on the security level you might say yeah we might need a couple of approvals one two three so based on the severity level you can do that that's not a problem yeah i i, I know we talked about this a little bit earlier but i i see the immediate use for this is uh, more like a contractor or a guest account you know where it's like i have someone who's uh maybe just for a short amount of time you know in the legal industry at least we have you know folks that come in uh, maybe go through uh, a little bit of data or a little bit of whatever it is um, for reporting purposes they're in for maybe three to six months or you know for litigation purposes we just say here here's this thing that's available to you you can get in we manage that life cycle but not trying to steal your thunder but that, that's where i think we're heading with this so thank you no absolutely you're right you're absolutely uh point on this is exactly what it is and then it also provides life cycle services as well right so um microsoft actually has in november of last year introduced a new license uh it governance license and yeah. it governance uh which actually gives you the life cycle policy as well so you can start their policies you can create which is pretty much out of the scope of this uh, discussion, but you can create lifestyle po policies for onboarding and offboarding as well. So, which makes oh. it easier for companies, yeah, you know, um, to make sure you're onboarding the resources and then you're offboarding. So, from an access standpoint, access reviews, whatnot, those are going to come into play. So, yeah, uh, no, perfect. Uh, that's a perfect Sweet. question, right? So, that was great. Okay, so now moving on, uh, and one of the challenges we've seen is you know access providing access is always challenging and microsoft with their zero date or zero trust policy uh they want to minimize what kind of access they want to give out uh, it's least privilege always so these are the roles that are uh, listed here uh, and apparently microsoft kind of changed a couple of things there so you before when i was looking the intro id admin role used to could actually add security groups and the office 365 but apparently now it can only add an app so microsoft kind of changing those things so so if somebody wants to do the entire thing they would have to be a global admin on the top level um but once you create a catalog make that person a catalog owner they pro they don't mm -hmm. need all these roles right so i do the ideally and this is what happens usually whoever is a global admin or even identity governance admin would create the catalog assign the proper permissioning and then hand it over and and also depends on the organization as well right because we've seen is this can go two or three ways one is uh centralized meaning all the access packages are going to be created by one entity or you know mm -hmm. your help desk or your it department the other could be centralized that your it is uh decentralized so now each department can create their own access packages and whatnot um so it really depends on where you stand with the organization how big is the organization uh i for me i see it mainly centralized because you want to have that control from a 
governance and IT role aspect. Uh, but I can also see on the flip side where decentralized because of the, if the organizations are large enterprises yeah. across the globe, then you you want to scale, you know, and don't don't want to rely just on IT. So that's the thing. And then talking about uh, this summary of terminologies as well, uh, we have some ter terminologies we which we will be seeing in the demo as well. So I, I already kind of mentioned the catalog owner. So you might be asking, okay, what does a catalog owner do? So catalog owner pretty much um, edits and manages, you know, a catalog. Obviously, within a catalog, there are resources, there are access packages. So that's what a catalog owner does. Okay. Uh, and then, because what, what what might happen is you might say, okay, right now we start an access package only with SharePoint Online, but then we need to uh, create a or bring in a team site. Then, if the catalog owner uh, can add that teams into the resource and then add it to the access package for more provisioning, right? And then from a catalog reader is a person who can only view existing access packages within that catalog. So they're not able to delete the catalog. They're not able to edit or make changes to the catalog. Um, and then the last one, uh, obviously there's access package manager and then the access package assignment manager. So the assignment manager is a great role for a person who is going to be involved in day-to-day -day inviting people. So let's say, you know, uh, you say, okay, we are, to your point, you have a contractor, we want somebody to invite that contractor into our access package for SharePoint Online or Teams, and uh, you don't want to contact IT every time. So this could be a end user in any department could be finance, could be HR, whatnot. You can make that person a access package assignment manager, and then they can uh, invite the, could be the internal user or the external user into the access package um, and then assign the proper permissioning. So those are the main four roles uh, from a catalog uh, permissioning standpoint. Awesome. So now let's talk about uh, entitlement management. So I, I know I've kind of thrown that word, but Microsoft actually what ha what, what they've done is uh, really given this name to IT governance, right? So Microsoft is calling entitlement management as IT governance. And that's pretty much a, a feature that enables organization to manage identity and access lifecycle at scale, right? Uh, and this could be automated uh, workflow, assignments, reviews, expiration, life cycle uh, from a contractor, from an employee, onboarding, offboarding. So there's so much nice. things involved <clears throat> in the entire management. And even as we can see up here, we have the organization, right? So uh, we have the organization here. We have the resources. So if you look, these are two apps, Box and Finance app. This is a group. And then SharePoint site and, and share, uh, SharePoint site for legal and marketing. Hannah is the IT admin. And then these three people at the bottom are the catalog creators. So they can create the catalog. And then, and then from, from, a, from a marketing standpoint, uh, these are two had uh, access packages we have. So marketing, marketing uh, catalog and then the finance catalog. And then under the marketing, we have resources. So marketing and then we have two access packages, sales access package and then campaign access package, similar with the finance catalog resource, finance access package, and then the legal catalog. Um, and then the legal access package, right? So they're pretty much bro broken it down very nicely. So you can have, uh, you can see the flow. So one thing you would pretty much figure out is, as I mentioned, you know, you have the catalog on the on the higher level, which is the outer layer, if you will. Then you have the resources, and then you have the access packages. Once you create the access package, you create the um, 
uh, add the resources to to it as well. Awesome. So now let's uh, before we jump into the demo, um, any questions or are we okay? No, I think I think this is all. It's clear to me, Abdul. Hopefully, <laughs> um, but I, I can definitely see a lot of a lot of use cases for this. Um, you know, even yeah, I know we started off in like contractor, but it's, it's even internally. Um, this is great yeah. because it. I think through um, you know my group, my team at work gets access uh, um, requests for you know hey we have a new incoming application that the attorneys want to use we want to set up SSO um, get it all enabled but you know what do we do afterwards um, sure we hand it off here's the link but um, wouldn't it be nice to say all right fine here's um, marketing or HR team um, you're now in control of managing access to that app and you know this is maybe what you get for as a new employee. Um, or whatever, um, what have you. So, yeah, I can see a lot of use cases already for this. <laughs> oh, exactly. And the use it as, and as Microsoft start adding more and more resources, their use cases are going to go up now, right? Right now, there are only three, mainly three resources. But yeah, I, I can see, to your point, I can foresee this is uh, this going and expanding a lot. So. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is go into the portal and just just wanted to bring this up is, you know, I, I know everybody is used to the um, Microsoft Azure portal, the portal.azure.com. But as we know, the newly minted portal is the Entra portal, right? So Entra ID, so Entra Microsoft.com. And, and the feel and look is a little bit different. So it does take some time to get used to it. But from our aspect, uh, we're going under identity governance, entitlement management, and then mm -hmm. you'll see, you know, the uh, access packages and things laid out there. One thing I don't know why Microsoft did it this way is they have the access package listed after the uh, the catalog. This is after the access package. To me, it should be um, the other way around because you have to create a catalog yeah. first and then the access package. So what we'll do is, and actually before I do that, also I also want to point out is I created a group, okay? So this is a security group that I created. Uh, and as you can see, there's no users in there, okay? And the reason being, I, I'm showing this is, what we'll do is we'll add this group to our access package and anybody who would be invited to the access package would be uh, added to this group automatically. So now, nice. based, based on this group, you might say, okay, I want to uh, take this group and assign permissioning, or you want to say, hey, how many people are even assigned to this access package? And you can come and take a look, right? So it becomes really easy to manage from that aspect. I'm also thinking, too, as you had on up on the screen, if we could flip back real quick, it helps me. Sorry, I lost your way, uh, audio. Oh, interesting. Or me. Hopefully I'm back. I uh, know you're very quiet, actually. Hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, what, what will let's create a new access package. So let's do spring twenty twenty four. So yeah, we'll just give this a name and description. What I'll do is I'll enable. So enable means you know you want to enable the catalog, and then you also want to enable the external user. So obviously, if you want to invite any users uh, externally from different from another like microsoft 365 tenant or you know external user um, so you want to make sure that is enabled so now we have the catalog okay and then once we create the catalog what we'll do is we go into resources and we will add that group so as you can see right um mainly there are three main things about the resources, 
groups and teams, applications, and SharePoint sites. This actually is coming soon. It's grayed out. So we'll see. We'll find out what exactly is this going to be, but uh, it's fairly new. So uh, I, I think it just popped up in the last couple of weeks. So we don't know what that is. But oh, interesting. what I'll do is I'll add the group. So I create the group here. I'll add the group, as you can see. So that is, and then what added. Okay, so the group is added there now. As you can see, this, this is a group. Let me go back and add a SharePoint site as well. So I have a couple of SharePoint sites. Uh, so I'll add the communication site. Let's do that one. Or actually, we can actually add a couple. So you can even choose a couple and then add there. One of the other things uh, it will have to do is set the permission. So you don't set the permission on the catalog side. You set the permission on the access package. And when I say permission, meaning is it going to be a visitor member or a owner uh, of that SharePoint site? Mm -hmm. So now if you see we are in the catalog, we have the resources. And if I go here, we do not have any access packages. Now, before we jump into the access package or creating an access package, as I was talking about those roles, right? So here we see we have the add catalog owner, catalog reader, the four roles, which we briefly touched on. And what I'll do is I can um, uh, make Adele actually a catalog owner. So that way, this person, and we can see this is a catalog owner up here. So this person can, uh, you know, make changes to the catalog. So now let's quickly add a catalog. So I'll call this um, and that description would be the same just for ours. And then it's asking me to add the resources, right? So, and the funny thing is, if we did not add the resources in the catalog, nothing would show mm -hmm. up here. So see, we added the um, SharePoint site, so it's showing up here. Otherwise, when I did the catalog, there were more sites, but because we did not add all of them to the catalog, only the ones we added are showing up here. Although you can go back, you can go up here and take a look, you know, these ones. Uh, so I'll add yeah. this and then based on your need, you'll decide, okay, do I want to make this? Obviously you don't want to make anybody owner, but based on your need, is this person going to be a uh, member of the SharePoint site? You can even do editors or viewers, um, you know, mainly because people do collaboration, we'll leave that as members here. And then I'll add the other group. So as you can see, because we added this in the catalog, it's already showing up. I don't even have to look it up this time around. Uh, the first time, because it was not part of the catalog, I had to search it and add it. Now it's already coming up because this is part of the catalog this and then this actually becomes really interesting now because this is what i was talking about the policy right so mm -hmm. from a user aspect you might say okay are, is this catalog only going to be limited to the users in the directory meaning uh your internal directory regardless if it's a hybrid or not right or is it going to be for external users or the other option is you only want admin or you only want direct assignment, meaning only admin scan invite users. So when they go to myapps.microsoft.com, they're not going to see any access packages, only admin. And I'll show you how that looks like from there. So what I'll do is I'll leave it open for the time being. Uh, the other option as, as I, uh, and I actually, I can go back and take, we can also take a look. You can also specify the connected organization. The, the one I was talking about saying, okay, um, if there are organizations 
that are whitelisted. So if I go here, I already have a couple of organizations that I've added uh, mm -hmm. part of the demo. So we have Gmail, we have actually Microsoft. So I, what I can do is I can add that in there, right? But because I do not have a Microsoft account, we won't be able to test it. So what I'll do is just do all users. And as you can see, once I hit all users, it automatically says required approval, right? It, 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 it's grayed out. I cannot even say no. And then for this one, you can say, yep, yeah, do we need a justification? I'll say no for here because it's going to pop up. And then uh, as I was mentioning before, how many stages of approvals do you need? One, two, or three gets mm -hmm. really granular. I'll just leave one. And then uh, will internal, external, or you can use a specific person. So for this one, what I'll do is I'll just uh, choose mine account. I'll be the approver. So I'll get the email for approving this. Require approval. I'll say no for the time being. We want to make sure this is enabled because if it's not, then you won't be able to request uh, or any users won't be able to request access packages. Um, Microsoft is coming out with the verif verified ID. Um, it's a long discussion, uh, a little bit out of scope uh, of this. So yeah, yeah another session, I think. Yeah, probably exactly. <laughs> so I'll leave that as is. Um, you know, request information. A lot of companies want to do this uh, for for tagging or tracking and whatnot. So sure. um, for for the demo, I'll just leave that, but you can get granular with this. Now, this is what I was talking about to your point, Chris. Uh, let's say you say, okay, we have a um, contractor and the contractor end date is going to be X. So you can mm -hmm. put that on there, right? Or you say, hey, contractor started today and it's going to be um, uh, after a year. So you can yeah. choose the numbers, hours, or say never. For this one, I'm just going to say never. And then can the user specify timeline? That's a good option as well, but I'll just say no for the time being. Um, and then access reviews, right? We were talking about this access review. So Ooh. you can start and it can be done bi-weekly. Uh, sorry, weekly, annually, quarterly. So you can choose when you want to do the uh, access reviews based on the frequency. The good thing I like about this is a reviewer can actually review that self review their access so contractor oh. says yep yeah, my contract was extended they'll say they'll do self review and request um again access and once it gets approved then yeah they'll get they'll get the access so this is really good you can also specify the reviewers here you can add the users uh, could be internal or external or you can add a manager as well right um, so that's really good as well for the demo i'll just turn it off because obviously there's no way we can show this it, it does take time right so <laughs> but i wanted to basically show that on there uh custom extensions you can play with custom extensions and um do a lot of things there so you know like depending on what what there's so many things required is approvals required creations whatnot um you can get really granular and fancy uh, but for the demo purposes we're just keeping it very simple and then you know as you can see we have the name description um and it pretty much walks us through what this is going to look like and then hit create there we go so the team side was causing some issues there. So as we can see, we're in the access package now. If you go into resources, this is our resource. And then awesome. we can take a look and we can take a look at the policy as well. So obviously the first policy is gonna be the initial policy. So it says initial. And then if you wanna edit and then go back and make any changes, you can always go back and make changes. And then, awesome. uh, you know, that is gonna be saved there. So for our demo, what I will be doing now is go into the access package. And this is uh, like I was mentioning, this is the unique link, 
of the access oh, package, cool. right? Yeah. So if you are coming for this from the same tenant, then you can just mm -hmm. go into myaccess.microsoft.com and you will see all the available access packages. But what we're doing here now is um, let me bring another browser real quick. So I will bring this browser. What I'm going to do is put that link in there. And yeah. and I will use a temp email to log in. It's going to send me a code real quick mm -hmm. to the email. Receive the code. And as you can see, I have the access package here. Request, I'll do continue. Request period specified now. This is let's just say HR project. Once it it continues, and there we go. So the access has been um, requested. Mm -hmm. Now let me come back to um, let me bring this screen. So I'm going to refresh because what what happens is, and honestly, sometimes real time doesn't work very well. But I should be receiving an email here momentarily to provide an access or approve the access. Because um, I, I put myself as a approver for this email for the tenant. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Hey. So I would go in there. It's going to basically log me in. I would come here and it says, yep, yeah, we have one pending approval. This person wants to approve, uh, wants access to your access package. Approve. I can say either approve or deny. I say approve. Yep. Yeah, uh, for HR project. And then I do submit. Awesome. And then what I will do is bring back our this user. I don't want to refresh because then it's going to cut me. Out. I'll have to log in again. But if I come back and see active, now we have an active access package. And, and I click on there, the website comes in. Obviously, I'll have to go through uh, the terms of the tenant or whatever they have said and then boom oh. you know you have the access so uh, this if it was a te team site same thing would happen as well right um and now let me go back and see your request i also got the email that you know it has yeah. been approved when it approved so from a tracking standpoint it makes it easier as well okay now let's go and take a look at the membership up here. Let me refresh because it should be coming here. Okay, it, it might not. Sometimes it doesn't take time. But then, so these are, if, yeah, they, go ahead. What we can do is confirm from here is this is the assignment. So anytime a user is invited, they would get an assignment. So as you can mm -hmm. see, this this person was delivered right and then otherwise there would have been an error so there's no error you can see the history details that this person access delivered and 
it was all good. Awesome. So yeah, so these are good mechanisms for us to take a look and see this person, you know, from the initial policy. Let me refresh because this should work. Yeah. Did sometimes, you know, um... sometimes it's not real time. It doesn't happen, but no. um, I, I call this the speed of cloud. So, you know, somewhere <laughs> between the time you change it and 20 minutes later. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? We were, oh, you know what? We were not able to add because we were getting the error. So that makes sense now. Uh, we didn't yeah. add, we didn't okay. add that um, because, um, let me see if I can do it now. Because this is the group that we were having issues adding in there. Role is for the sake of it, I'll just add it as the yeah. owner. So, um, and see now it added. I don't know why it wasn't letting me add, but yeah. So, what happens is now if we go back and because we added this, it should obviously it's not yeah, gonna come right away, but yeah, now. yeah, might some take some time with the propagation and whatnot, but yeah, we should see the user here. Okay, now the other thing we can also verify is, uh, I'll leave this here, but if you wanna see how the user came in, we can go and verify the user that this should be mm -hmm. a guest user coming in, okay? Um, there we go. So if you'll take a look at this user, this is a guest user. User type is guest. Let's go take a look at the properties. This guest was invited, right? That's the email it was invited. Uh, so yeah, you know, so this is the external user account is enabled. So uh, this is the way you can track as well, like, you know, from a user standpoint, because what initially happens if the guest user does not exist, once you invite the user from the access pack standpoint, it is going to create the I guest user here and then grant uh, access to the resources. Because if the user doesn't exist, then you know it doesn't know True. what to do. So first thing is first, it has to create the user here in the enter ID. And then once that is created, then it's going to start giving out uh, access to the resources. That's interesting. This thing is, it's not, maybe we're still missing something, but it should work because we already added the, um, see, this is the group that was added. And you can even see who added it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think for our session, you know, this is really what I wanted to showcase um beautiful i um what else can we show like yeah a lot more there's probably more we can go on but i i think for our session this should be more than enough and then here mm -hmm. there's access reviews i didn't turn on the access reviews but people can come and yeah. um do the access review here one thing i do want to mention real quick is uh, i was talking about the licensing um so let me go in here real quick. Because um, Microsoft does not provide this licensing you have to buy. So right now I'm mm -hmm. running a uh, trial. So enter ID governance license. So you need this license for the lifecycle policy and other things. So for even for access reviews, you, you would need this license. Um, and this is a step up on P2, right? Correct, correct. This yeah. exactly, you got it. This is a step up for P2. Um, and not everybody needs to have that depending on what are you doing. So if you're doing guest access reviews, there might be different scenarios. Sure. Uh, you know, if if the person, if you're saying, okay, everybody's gonna be doing their own auditing or access reviews, then everybody would need a license. But honestly, with Microsoft licensing, you need a PhD. Um, so I don't really talk about licensing because it gets really complicated really quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but the reason I wanted to bring out is this actually came out in November 
and mm -hmm. Microsoft has kind of changed a lot of things because what happens is once you go into the access review side of things, uh, let's, uh, do I still have that open? And I try to use this portal more because, you know, you, you can see what happens. So from a lifestyle, life cycle workflow, because of the, I have the license, it's, it's showing me things. Otherwise, this would have been really grayed out. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is um, from an access review standpoint, you can even come and change settings and whatnot. And also, real quick, on the access package, the identity governance side of things, you there are settings you can do, and then Microsoft actually has the features. So if you want to opt in, you can turn them on. So you can say, hey, okay. there's a access package. There's a new enable the feature. You can come in and to save that's going to be enabling right so all the updates usually come out of here and then you can take a look and see um what options you want to do like number of days before removing an external user is 30 if you don't like that you can reduce it you can extend it so there are a lot of uh playing ground if you will from that awesome. um yeah I, I think with this we'll just um yeah, I don't think so. This is happening. The group is not working, but uh, yeah. I'll have to take it. But uh, yeah, I, I, that's uh, awesome. was demo. Yeah, hopefully so, this was really uh, uh, beneficial to the people. So yeah, yeah. No, I I even learned a lot from it too because I as I'm thinking through, you know, it's like. This can all be combined with conditional access, all the other stuff that, you know, folks are doing too for maybe there's a EULA that prompts, you know, as the guest is coming in too. But this is a nice, like, another step of just handling that whole life cycle for, for folks, um, you know, coming in, accessing applications. So nice job. Nice job. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So, um yeah, as you said, this, this has been a great session. Hopefully you all learned something wonderful. Um, we're happy to provide and happy to kind of jump through some of these newer features. We even get tripped up sometimes with previews. It's fine. It's, it's all part of the gig. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, Abdul, to you. Yeah, Any thanks. Uh, thanks Chris, for, uh, no, thanks so much. Uh, and yeah, hopefully people find this uh, helpful this is something new technology there's a lot of features in preview uh and it keeps changing so you know that that's one of the challenges we have just keeping up with because uh coming like in a couple of weeks you'll go back to the portal and like oh yeah we have this new feature so uh that's all different name but... different location different exactly <laughs> i'm still not caught up on the intro id name no. so yeah yeah well... So All with right. that being said, um, that's a wrap for us. Hopefully, you know, you enjoyed the session. Uh, feel free to reach out to us through um, X or LinkedIn and whatnot. Happy to answer any questions. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, chat with you next year.